Back on the Pete the Planner Show, I'm Pete the Planner. We're answering your money questions. Here's how this show works. It, it's you. You make this show work. You email askpete at petetheplanner.com, and we'll answer your questions. Well, why is that interesting? Well, because it's interesting. <laughs> it just is. This is what we do. I've been doing it for years. It's interesting. It uh, is. We have nothing to sell you. I have, everyone has biases, I have biases, but I'm not leading to a particular product. I'm not trying to sell anything. So it's just like, it's just an answer. Sometimes we don't know who to ask money questions to. And this next question we have from a guy in Denver is exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, like who do you ask this question to other than us? Uh, hi, Pete. I'm a single dad raising my five-year-old son in Denver, Colorado. I'm already feeling altitude sickness just from the email because I get elderly. <laughs> my elderly widowed mother lives with me. I have a two bedroom condo that is valued at $250,000 and there's $75,000 left on the mortgage. Nicole, here's what I'm doing. Yep. How much equity does he have in the house? This is from last week's repeat. We're all learning, right? Yes. He has $250,000. That's the value of the condo. 250,000. He only owes seventy five. Okay. How much equity uh -oh, does gotta, he have? I gotta do some math. Two hundred and fifty thousand value. He owes seventy five. Because we're always learning. We're teaching. We're learning. So he's got one hundred and seventy five thousand. One hundred and seventy five thousand dollars in equity. That is how much of the home he owns. He either paid that down, or his property has increased, and therefore his equity has increased as well. This is disgusting how much you've learned. <laughs> uh, my student loans increased from $110,000 to $230,000 over a five-year period due to a high conflict custody battle. Oh. I'm 39 and deeply worried about my student loan debt. Any help or direction would be much appreciated. Sincerely, this emailer. Thank you, emailer. So, Nicole, I feel like it's worth explaining how in the world student loans go from 110000 to 230000 over a five-year period. Yeah, yeah that's do, kind do, of a jump. Do you know how? I'm, no, I, mean, I don't. Okay. So he was, he was in default or deferment or he was in something. He wasn't paying on them. Oh, okay. Okay. So as they say in the movies, the juice was still running. Like basically the interest was just like piling up oh. and since he wasn't paying the interest the interest then would capitalize into the loan so nicole let's just take a round number of a hundred thousand dollars okay and let's say i owe six thousand dollars or six percent interest in a year on that hundred thousand dollars okay uh -huh. so so i don't pay it no. so my loans go from a hundred thousand to a hundred and six thousand the next year, I don't pay the oh. interest, so it goes from 106 to 112. Right, whatever. because then it just compounds on top of whatever you're. Yeah, and then it just snowballs. And penalties and all sorts of things. So, what what you know, we talk about compound interest right. on this all the time. Yeah, it basically becomes the reverse of compound interest, and builds up debt instead of an asset. Oh gosh. Which you know, here's what's crazy now. No one's going to take $110,000 of an asset and have it compound to $230,000 in a five-year period. It's not going to more than double. Uh -uh. Uh, I mean, there's really no set fixed uh, rate of return that's going to allow you to do that. But from a debt perspective with the different penalties and how um, escalated interest rates can get involved, because sometimes with Nicole, uh, with debt, Nicole, what, what you <laughs> find out is that... Um, You'll pay one interest rate until you go into default. And then they crank up the juice. Oh. So they'll say, okay, you're at 6.99%, but now you're at 13.99%, or now you're at 29.99%. Uh -uh. And that doesn't necessarily what happens with student loans, or it may have in this case, but that's what happens with uh, credit cards all the time. Now, that's not answering this guy's question. I just needed to give everybody up to speed as to why that happens, because a lot of people yeah. go, why did that happen? Why did it go on? And I will also say, and I, I love the language of an email, because it gets me to know what a person's thinking. And I, I'm not a, uh, assigning blame or anything here, but uh -uh. The, the way he puts it is, over a five-year period due to a high conflict custody battle, the words that aren't used there are I stopped paying on my loan. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> because he was either distracted or he was uh, economically damaged. 
uh, during that time frame. If it was a high conflict custody battle, here's my guess, and I, and I don't know how sure I am of this hypothesis. I feel like he had such high legal bills that he chose to go into default, right? Not pay his loans, so they could pay his legal bills. That's my guess. I yeah. I mean, that would be, yeah. So here's what's happened. I, I don't know how much of an education this individual has. I, I don't know what it's valued at. But I do know this person now owes two, is a 39-year-old, probably greatly removed from school, maybe almost 20 years removed from right, school. Right, we don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, and he owes $230,000. Nicole, if I, if I walked up to you right now on the street and said, uh, you now owe someone $230,000. It's not a trick. It's not. It's just like, that's what you do. That's got to feel overwhelming, doesn't it? Yeah. It makes me just want to lay down. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the challenge for this person is, I know this is terrible, is to ignore it. That sounds like horrible advice, but that's my advice. My advice is the payment is the payment, man. The balance Ignore the balance. Who cares that it's $230,000? Whatever your monthly payment is, it is what it is. It's a house you can't live in. If you're being charged 700 bucks a month, well, then you're budgeting everything else as a single dad, taking care of your elderly widowed mom at $700 uh, less than you normally would have. Right. And that's a horrible answer, but I guess what I'm, I'm trying to give this person uh, permission to do is to ignore the balance right, and you, just think about the payment. You can't think about, oh, the f I owe over $200,000. No. You have to look at the fact of, okay, each month I have to remove $700 from my budget and just go from there. You can't focus on that. Otherwise, you don't move the needle at all. And I know this is different, but I mean, I think about the real estate I own, a couple of places, uh, rentals and whatnot. Um, I owed well over a half million dollars to banks. Yeah. And while I realize I'm building equity in those homes and those sorts of things, I, I don't walk around going, I owe half a million dollars no. because I just accept the payment as the payment. But when you have a debt like this that is not secured by anything other than your education, it's really easy to, to get distracted by the 230. Now, he does tell us the equity in his home for a reason because he's thinking, can I alleviate the stress of this 230 by wiping it at a partial uh, amount of it out with an right. asset by taking an equity loan? And the answer is absolutely not. You need to forget that you have a $230,000 balance and just pay the payment. Uh, I'm sorry, there are no other things to do. I mean, you could be one of those people who are like, well, I'm gonna get on the grind and pay this off in 10 years. Probably not gonna happen if we're being honest. If you're a single dad, you're caring for an elderly widowed mom? No, not gonna happen. This yeah. is horribly simple, awful advice, but the advice is give yourself permission to never think about the $230,000 and just make the payment. You, my friend who emailed me, you may have a debt, whatever amount it is, with these student loan providers for the rest of your life. It's just, it, that's what it is. I'm sorry there was a high conflict custody battle that put you in this situation. There were a lot of other circumstances here that are not great. And, and then unfortunately that's your reality. And this advice may not be helpful. It may be condescending. It may be uh, not at all what you want, but it's the truth. I've been in this situation a million times with other emailers and people we've dealt with. The only solution is to make the payment and never think about the words $230,000 ever again. Coming up after the break, we're going to uh, answer a question from a woman who is emotionally attached to a house that she's pretty sure she needs to get out of. If you want to email us, do it. Ask Pete at PeteThePlanner.com. This is the Pete the Planner Show, and I am Pete the Planner.